So what we're going to do today is we're looking at uh, all the electrical components that make up the rear end of this spot welder. Now I looked at a lot of YouTube videos and saw what other people were doing and I sort of knew how I wanted to have mine set up and I wanted to have a foot controller, foot control pedal and I also wanted to have a press button switch on the top of the machine and I also wanted to have some way of controlling the weld time. So what I ended up with was um, one of these time delay relays. So this one's an ASY-2D uh, digital timer. Uh, got this on eBay, I think it was about $25. Um, these come with a little sticker that says 36 volts ACDC. Um, I found out that uh, it won't operate on 12 volts. So I did have a 12 volt power supply DC built into the back end of the machine and it just didn't have enough grunt to pull the, the relay contacts together so I upgraded to a 24 volt uh, DC power supply and that works so even though it says 36 volts it'll work on 24 and the, the good thing about these is this one uh, operates in 0.1 second intervals so with the little press button switches there you can set that that's 7.9 seconds um, and that's 0.9 of a second. The digital display at the top there gives you a countdown from whatever your set time is to zero and uh, works really well. So that's going in the top of the casing. Now to do all the heavy current switching to the, the transformer I've got a uh, solid state relay. Uh, this also operates off the 24 volt supply uh, the DC supply on the switching side and uh, it's got the 380 volt AC connectors on the, the top of the solid state relay there which go directly to the, the primary on the transformer. So for the power supply I, I had a little 12 volt um, module uh, which I think came out of one of those little um, power supplies for a, uh, a laptop computer or something like that. Uh, it was all open and it was mounted on this aluminium heatsink. Um, it just didn't have enough power to operate the relay. So this is a 24 volt one. I actually just left it in the case and put a, a U-bolt over that to hold it all down. I figured that I'd rather have that all uh, with secondary insulation around it and uh, just made a nice neat package. All I did do is um, where the original plug went in here, I, I knocked the pins out and soldered these wires directly to the circuit board inside and just simply pass them out through the holes in the casing. And as you can see there, that's the original um, power wire for the, the DC. And I just simply joined that to give us an extra bit of length. So that little module is going to get uh, bolted down to the back end. I've got a momentary contact switch uh, which you need to hold down in order to make the counter run backwards to zero. Didn't think about that to start with. I figured that you just simply press it once and it would just count down but you've actually got to hold it there. And I've got an illuminated um, power switch with a 240 volts. So this is just the main power that turns on the hold spot welder. At the rear of the the welder. I'm going to mount cooling fan. This is just a uh, 12 volt brushless uh, cooling fan, the type that you find in a computer. And I've just simply fabricated a, an end plate to take that. This also has the, the grommet for the 240 volt power in and uh, that's just going to bolt down to the rear of the machine as well. So I wanted to keep this uh, you know, fairly neat sort of package this fan was originally going to go on the inside but there just wasn't room and it's mounted on the outside now. I was a bit worried about you know sort of physical damage but the cover as you see later on gives this some protection. So let's go ahead and get the rear end of this assembled. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, well that's taken nearly an hour uh, to put all that back together again. Um, as you can see, the access down there is pretty limited. And um, I tested this on the bench. I didn't have any of the stuff partly assembled. It was just little sort of switches lying out on the bench. And um, uh, typically when you go to put it back together again, wires aren't long enough, wires aren't terminated properly. Um, you forget the thread wires through where they're meant to go, things get tangled and so on. So it took a bit of messing around to get all that done, so that's why I did it all off camera. But um, I just plugged it in and tested it. Everything seems to be going well. So I'll, um, I'll just plug this in. Okay, so main power is on. Okay, fan's running, that's good. The um, little green indicator light on the 24 volt power supply is on. The, um, the cover just needs to be put back in place and then we'll give it a test to see what happens. So I'll do that. Switch my main power off first. Okay, so that's it all assembled. Now, these little um, decorative plates, uh, I was able to laser cut and laser etch those. That one there is done in red. Did one in the yellow and black, which I like better, so I stuck with that. Um, same with the power switch here. I just sort of put that down with a bit of double sided tape and the switch holds it in the rest of the way. So I'll just uh, run this again. Okay, so the main power switch is there. Uh, that indicator light, although on the switch it said it's 12 volts, it actually does run on 24, so I'm happy with that. And I've got that set to 0.9 of a second, and if I push and hold the weld switch, you should see this digital counter count back from the 0.9 of a second. So we'll give it a go. And you can, oh, I don't know if you can hear, the, the relay clicks at the end of that 0.9 of a second. So that's all good. So um, I'm going to give this a, a trial run with some welding. So I'm just going to go off camera and just check all my settings, make sure I've got my electrodes correct, and then we'll try it. Okay, so this is just some uh, 0.8 millimeter zinc anneal, uh, zinc plated steel. I just gave that a weld and it seems to be fine, so I'll just try that one again. Okay, 0.9 of a second seemed to be fine, so we'll give that a weld. And the weld looks neat. And I can break that. We might just give it another go, I'll give it a bit more time. Another go. Okay. Try some stainless. It's about the same gauge, might be about 0.6 this one. Yep. Mm, 
that's not bad. Try something thicker. These are just some uh, zinc plated washers, probably a millimetre thick. Interestingly, the, um, the thicker material seems to weld better. Could just be that I'm getting more clamping pressure. It could just also be the the heat build up between the parts. But I did notice that uh, on some really light gauge material that the welds weren't holding all that well. But I'm calling that good. It needs a little bit more work on it, but um, so far I'm happy. Well, here we are. It's a few days later. I've done a bit of messing around with the, the electrodes on this welder and what I did was uh, I machined them to slightly smaller uh, area on the end of the electrode and uh, what this does is it concentrates the, the amperage of the weld into a smaller contact area so current density is the most important thing about spot welding so it's being able to concentrate all of that heat into a smaller area what I've found now is that the, the welds are much more consistent and if I can just demonstrate, this is just once again some um, galvanised steel. Uh, if I clamp and weld, just going to put a single weld here. This is 0.9 of a second. And according to Dan Gelbart, who's a bit of a guru on spot welding, the way to test these is to peel apart peel apart the two pieces of material and if you've got a good spot weld it should tear a hole in at least one of the parts and I don't know if you can see that but there's, there's actually a through hole in that material so it's actually pulled right through and the other piece has a remnant of that material on the weld so I'm much happier with this now. It's sort of uh, producing wells which I think are uh, good enough for what I want. And with several wells across that material, it would be pretty much impossible to break that apart without destroying it. So, I'm happy with that. The welds are quite small, but don't forget this is a home-built welder with a you know, limit of about 1 kVA. But for what I do, which is generally hobby work, I'm quite happy with that. What I want to do is a, a follow-up video. I was able to purchase one of these uh, cheap foot pedals. Um, this one has uh, a normally open contact and a normally closed contact and when you press switch you can close the contact. So what I want to do is to uh, fit a socket on the side of the welder and a removable plug so I can use the foot pedal if I want to. If I don't want to use it I just would uh, remove that and I can just use the normal press switch on top. So basically it's just two switches uh, connected in series uh, or in parallel sorry and that'll give me the option and the other thing that I've been able to get is some 8mm solid copper rod. So in the follow-up video I just want to demonstrate the manufacture of uh, some alternative electrodes uh, for this machine. So I want to make a pair of electrodes that can weld wire at uh, right angles or whatever other angle you want. Uh, I also want to make a, an electrode for welding studs onto flat steel and I want to try and make a pair of cranked electrodes uh, with a sort of an S-bend in them so that you can get in a bit closer to a, a standing scene. So I'm going to do that with a follow-up video. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget that if you want to use any of the drawings or any of the engineering data from this project you can find uh, all of the parts, the engineering drawings over at Thingiverse. Uh, I've put a link in the description for this video and part one and I'm quite happy for anybody to use that information for your own use. You can modify it, you can use it as is, that's totally up to you. So, 
for now. Thanks for watching.